ओम नमो गुरवे भवती भवतः भवन्ति भवसी भवतः भवतः भवामी भवावः भवामः What I have just recited is the present tense of the verb bhu. The verb root bhu refers to existence, satta in Sanskrit. And the present tense is called lat. So this short sentence here, vartamane lat, means that the endings of the present, lat, are used for the present. Vartamana means present, this word here. So, uh, a verbal form in Sanskrit is a complete expression, is a complete sentence. When we say bhavati, that's a complete expression in itself and it means that someone or something exists. So this is what we would call third person in English. The Sanskrit conventions for persons are slightly different. Pratama means first, and this refers in fact to what in English would be the third person. Madhyama means middle, and this refers to the second person. Uttama means best, and this refers to the first person in English. Purusha means person. So we have here th three rows. You see, this row is the Prathama Purusha, first person according to the Sanskrit convention, third person according to the English convention. This is the Madhyama Purusha, middle person according to the Sanskrit convention, and second person according to the English convention. And this is the Uttama Purusha, which is best person according to the Sanskrit convention and first person according to the English convention. Just like for nouns, these are further available in the singular, dual or plural. So Eka means one, Dui means two, Bahu means many. So Bhavati means that Someone or something exists, singular. Bhavataha means that they too exist. And Bhavanti means they, plural, exist. Bhavasi means you, singular, exist. Bhavataha, you, too, exist. Bhavata, you, plural, more than two, exist. Bhavami, I, exist. Bhavavaha, we too exist, bhavavaha, we, plural, more than two, exist. We can, in Sanskrit, add pronouns, just like in English. If we want, we can say, aham, bhavami. We can do that, but we don't need to, because we already know that it is first person according to the English convention when we see Bhavami. But if we want for the sake of emphasis, for example, we can say Aham Bhavami. However, unlike in English, even when we do not express the pronoun, we have a perfectly fine sentence. If we want to form the past, a simple way to form the past from the present is to add sma. So if I, if I say bhavati sma, it does not anymore mean that he exists, it means he existed. And this can apply to all the forms. Now I will chant the paradigm once more. Bhavati bhavataha bhavanti Bhavasi bhavataha bhavatha bhavami bhavavaha bhavamaha